For months now, we have had endless rumors and speculation on the 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti. Configurations, release dates, pricing, and, well, it's no secret that I've often found it funny that people kept re-guessing at everything about these SKUs. The fact of the matter was, until everything was double or triple confirmed, guessing, from my perspective, was just... A waste of time. Like the 3080 Ti, guys, it, it's just GA102. NVIDIA can cut down the 3090 a little more and release it with whatever VRAM capacity they want whenever they want. It could have launched a month ago if NVIDIA wanted to. But the fact of the matter is I now have some information that for me does confirm the rough pricing of the 3080 Ti from vendors and the release date that video cards has basically confirmed already, by the way. So I want to talk about it. But before I talk about that, there is some backstory that needs to be touched on, specifically the story of the 3080 20GB, an SKU release that hasn't happened that I think people need to remember when they think about upcoming AMP releases and, and really upcoming GPU releases from any company over the next few years. So the 3080 20GB, this was a real SKU. It was on roadmaps that have leaked before, and it was going to release in early December 2020 to head off the 6900 XT. In fact, a funny thing to bring up is that I know someone that confirmed to me that some boxes from AIBs with the 3080 20GB SKU moniker on it were already being printed by the time NVIDIA finally pulled the plug on that SKU. You see, NVIDIA expected AMD's top Navi 21 SKUs to at best trade blows with the 3080. And, and deep down, I think NVIDIA expected the 3080 to have a firm at least 5% lead over whatever AMD released in the top M. But, well, that's just not what happened, is it? You know, see, NVIDIA thought if AMD released a top card, even if it had 16 gigabytes, you know what? We're better going to be better at ray tracing. They'll still lose in raster. We'll get away with giving it 10 gigabytes. We can have that extra profit margin, which is already very tight. But... When they saw the 6800 XT, in effect, trading blows with the 3080, some people would say even beating the 3080, they realized that the 6900 XT was notably stronger than that, even by 5%. A higher VRAM model just wouldn't make sense. You see, the 3080 20 gigabyte was at best going to have like an extra SM or two enabled over the 3080 10 gigabyte, but then come with 20 gigabytes so NVIDIA could claim, yeah, you know what though, we're still a little bit stronger and we still have a little bit more VRAM than the 6900 XT. But again, that's not what would have happened. NVIDIA came to the conclusion that they needed at least around the full bus of GA102 to beat the 6900 XT, and so they canceled it. And then NVIDIA started considering basically redoing their lineup. They hastily added 6 gigabytes to the 3060. That was initially going to be about a $330 to $350 6 gigabyte card. They added 6 gigabytes when they saw the 6700 XT was likely to blow it out of the water, even the cut down model, and they needed to, even if it made the 3070, 3060 Ti, and 3080's VRAM capacity look silly, give the 3060 12 gigabytes. And they were at least considering, I know, a 3070 or a 3070 Ti 16 gigabyte. And of course, a 30, well, there were a lot of versions of 3080 Ti they were considering. But then one thing became obvious after the 3060 launch and the 6700 XT launch. People were just going to buy any cards you put on the market right now. And in fact, they were having trouble keeping up with demand even after switching more of their volume to gamers instead of to miners. That they just didn't need the higher VRAM capacity. And so NVIDIA waited. And well, now I know that they are releasing a 3080 Ti for sure, 100% confirmed, and it's coming out soon. So let me confirm what I know. Basically, from what my sources have told me, the 3080 Ti could pretty much be paper launched within a week if they wanted to. They just need to get the cards to people for benchmarking. But that even though they are circulating in some people's hands, again, as I've confirmed on Twitter, there isn't a lot of high volume out there. In other words, the 3080 Ti really should launch, if NVIDIA wants it to, within about three weeks or so. And again, this really lines up exactly with what Video Cards has been reporting. But I didn't want to confirm anything until it sounded 100% confirmed from my end. And the 3070 Ti, in fact... It's almost at the same level, but not every SKU is confirmed yet based on what one of my sources said. So 
it's probably coming out. I mean, honestly, it could come out just a week after the 3080 Ti, uh, but certainly within three weeks afterwards, certainly before July. Um, So there's the release date timing, and of course, it will have the hash rate limiters that just hurts gamers. But what about the pricing? Well, this is pretty interesting. You see, I've always thought if you're going to launch a 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes, which let it be noted, it took AMD competing well with NVIDIA for NVIDIA to finally give you that final gigabyte on their Ti model. I thought it would just make sense to make it basically the same performance as a 3090. Give it 12 gigabytes because no one's going to complain. Let's face it, even though they maybe should. And price it at 1000 bucks next to the 6900 XT. Or if you're going to go the 6700 XT route of charging as much as humanly possible without looking completely insane, I think NVIDIA, at least I have thought, they should just charge $1,200. Same price they did for the 2080 Ti. I never really thought anything in between those for MSRP made sense. But based on what I'm hearing, the models for the 3080 Ti from AIB start just above $1,100 and they top out around well fifteen to $1,600. So they stop at about the 3090, and they start below 1200. So I think $1,200 for the MSRP is all but confirmed to not be it. And considering a lot of AIB models, even rebrands of the reference 6700 XT, started about you know 10, 20% more than what that was. I'm tempted to say that Nvidia is probably going to go with about a thousand bucks, you know, 999 for the 3080 Ti, just match the 6900 XT head on. Although, to be honest, you could certainly argue anything over $900 is crazy, considering it's just gonna be like nine and a half percent stronger than the 3080, based on what I'm told. Oh, and although I can't confirm all of the SKUs for the 3070 Ti in terms of like for AIB pricing. Uh, there are multiple models from AIBs that will be above the MSRP of the 3080. So, I mean, all I can say about the 3070 Ti MSRP is that you would think it should be 550 probably to 600, just priced right at the 6800's price. But that, yeah, AIBs are going to do what they did, if not worse, with the 6700 XT, which is to say, expect the 3070 Ti at launch from most AIBs to really be about the price of a lot of 3080 models, unfortunately. And yes, in the short term, it does suck that AIBs are seemingly going to continue to mark up graphics cards by an absurd amount. But I think the launch of these cards finally becoming firm signals to me that something's about to happen here with competition between AMD and NVIDIA, that more releases and software updates are coming than a lot of people earlier suspected would be happening. I want to talk about that because that's the most interesting part of this video for me. But before I do, let me quickly get through an ad from a sponsor. I'm proud to say that Skillshare is a sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people that allows its members to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new classes that allow you to continue to evolve your creativity. One such class that might interest me and a lot of my viewers is do-it-yourself studio setup and camera rigging with Mike Schreers. He tells you how to make a studio on a budget. So do not hesitate to go to Skillshare and remember there is a special offer. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can evolve and explore your creativity further even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare from previous offers. You can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. Sign up for Skillshare today, a wonderful learning community. Good job. I right, go. Not that way. You can go downstairs now. Go. Go. Anyways, like I said before, NVIDIA could have launched a 3080 Ti or 3070 Ti whatever they wanted to in the past five months. So the interesting question, once you confirm when the 3080 Ti is coming out is, why right now? And why are you pricing it directly against your AMD competition when you know it would probably sell for $1,200? And that was the price of the 2080 Ti. Why are you accepting a discount on your almost full 102 die that you weren't willing to do with the previous generation? And I think there's really... Two main reasons why NVIDIA would do this. You know, option number one really has to do with NVIDIA 
probably expecting supply to start to catch up with demand by August. Now, I'm not saying it'll be easy to get cards. I'm not saying AIBs won't be shipping most of their cards at ridiculous markups over the MSRP. I don't really expect that to change completely over the next few months, but I don't know why NVIDIA would add more SKUs to their lineup when there's all these shortages anyways. It doesn't make sense to launch things if everything now is selling. They would only do this if they thought supply was going to catch up with demand a little bit. And furthermore, if they knew only so many people who really just want like a 3060, a 3050 Ti, or, you know, the AMD counterpart, a 6600 XT, would be willing to buy a 3070. Not everyone's going to be willing to just go, oh, I can't get a hold of like a 3060 Ti, so I'm just going to buckle and buy a 3080. Not everyone will do that. And so I that's what I think it is. I think NVIDIA actually does possibly expect supply to catch up with demand, not completely but more so than what it is now, and that they need to have all price points serviced. You know, from the 3090 down to the 3050 Ti, they better have every SKU ready ahead of time. You don't want to be caught with your pants down with cards sitting on store shelves. Once that happens, you want every price point ready to go. And then there's option number two, and I think this one is the more exciting option. I think there's a good chance NVIDIA expects AMD to go to direct war with their software support sooner than I think a lot of people are expecting. Uh, people would be good to remember that at launch, the 6800 XT I reviewed, honestly, couldn't do almost anything as well as its Ampere counterparts besides gaming. I mean, I had broken renders, and I talked to other people that did as well. But with my 6700 XT review that just came out, I confirmed that, well, it wasn't always as good as its Ampere counterparts, at non-gaming tasks, it was much closer than before, and I had zero errors or problems using applications with hardware acceleration. That AMD software, at least for creator purposes, was catching up, and it wasn't a bad option anymore. There's that. Then there's honestly something that I gotta say I did not personally see coming this soon. Anyone remember that rumor that AMD would have a DLSS competitor against NVIDIA by March? Yeah, that turned out to not be true. And based on every source I've talked to, that info probably came from a bullshit source. So that one was false. It turned out to be false, and there's no evidence it ever came from anything real. There was no way AMD was ready by quarter one to have a DLSS competitor. But, well, I've got to say that something could be coming soon, and that actually does legitimately surprise me, I have to admit it. You know, let's be honest. If we look back at an interview with Scott Herkelman about Fidelity FX, back then he did publicly confirm something interesting that it would possibly be coming out to everyone, including not just vendors on desktop, but to consoles. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. I'm not sure how many console games would make use of it outside of their own proprietary solutions they've been using for a while, like checkerboarding, but that, yeah, having it so that everyone, maybe even NVIDIA's own cards, uses AMD's solution means that devs are likely to just not bother with DLSS if AMD can make a competitor to DLSS that works on everything. But he also said multiple things that, to me, seem to indicate that AMD's FSR was more of a fall release than a summer release. Well, I'm here to say that at least from the people I've talked to, and I can't confirm much because honestly, I don't know as much as other people are claiming they know, but I will have a link in the description to some of the recent FSR rumors that are going around right now. I don't want to talk about those because I only like talking about stuff I can confirm independently. But what I will say is, yeah, surprising to me, and I somehow missed this recently, it does seem like AMD may have a competitor to DLSS this summer not this fall or winter, and that honestly, this seems like to me a good reason for why NVIDIA may be ramping up their lineup so that there isn't any argument for getting AMD over them from their perspective. They would say, oh, okay, yes, we know now AMD has all the software we do, but d don't worry, don't get the 6800 instead of the 3080 or the 3070. We have the 3070 Ti that's a little stronger for the same price. Don't worry about the VRAM either. You don't need that VRAM, uh, according to us, even though, guys, look at recent releases. You need the VRAM. But that that is why I think NVIDIA is rounding out their lineup now, not later, and not before. I actually think it's a combination of both of, both of the options I said. That NVIDIA 
is aware that supply will likely start to catch up with demand soon in some meaningful ways. Not completely, but that you can't just sit around and launch anything and it'll sell at any price. That they do need to have, I guess, relative to AMD, not re- relative to what I think it should be, reasonable MSRPs. Or you could be caught with your pants down if all of a sudden there's a bunch of inventory sitting on store shelves. But that also, I think it is also the other option that they know they need to have a full lineup ready before AMD so that people don't miss out and just get AMD because they're software equivalent. I think that AMD is about to bring a lot of heat to NVIDIA. The only thing I can say about FSR is that it's coming sooner than people, including me, initially thought. Again, links in the description to the other people talking about it. But that additionally, it should probably work pretty well. But again, I can't confirm more than that on my end, so I'm not going to talk about it. And frankly, I don't want to confirm or act like I should be sure of anything until it comes out because I was really harsh on DLSS for, well, really for years. Um, And I think to just assume AMD will do everything well with it right away, I mean, they could. It sounds like they might, but I don't think that's fair. I think AMD needs to prove themselves before we double down that it's coming out right away and it's completely competitive with DLSS. Although, again, it sounds like, guys, surprisingly it could be. And honestly, you could almost come to the conclusion that AMD getting FSR ready to go all of a sudden will be in hush-hush about it is a bit of them knowing that supply may start to catch up with demand as well and that once that happens, they better have a DLSS competitor ready to go before supply catches up with demand. Just like NVIDIA needs to service all price points before supply catches up with demand. All this is to say, I do not think things are going to be great right away. But that, like I confirmed in my last video, NVIDIA does expect the shortages to have gotten better by quarter one next year. That what I'm seeing from both AMD and NVIDIA is that they think it could happen a little sooner than that as well, and they want to be ready. I think competition between these companies is finally going to heat up. I mean, let's be honest, there hasn't been competition when you're competing with supply, not each other, but that they will be probably competing with each other soon. And that's all I really have to say in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to set the expectations for pricing for the 3080 Ti, which is to say about the same as the 6900 XT besides the absurdly overpriced models, and that it will be releasing within a month and then quickly followed by the 3070 Ti and probably the 3050 Ti, and that this will happen probably right around when AMD has their FSR competitor out. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Moore's Law is Dead, if you enjoy this video, to share it, to like, to ring the bell button. And also, remember to support us on Patreon if you guys can. We really do need that support to keep everything going. You get access to early ad-free episodes of Broken Silicon and the exclusive podcast like Die Shrink, the backlog of other projects we do if you support us. So remember all of that. And as always, thank you for watching.